caught amongst a massive storm and this is all we have, the five euro umbrella. The trusty five euro umbrella. Vespa rides, city guides, and a lot of, uh, interesting food. Welcome to our ultimate Italian road trip. We're Matteo and Misha, the global expats. With our good looks and charming personality, along with our obsession with food and history, we're taking you through all 20 regions of Italy and showing you the unique things they have to offer. And we've started off in Sicily. In our last episode, we rode a cable car to the misty hilltop town of Arice, where we roamed the medieval streets and castles and ate a lot of sugar. Mm. <laughs> Today, we head to the eastern side of Sicily, starting in Ortigia, Syracuse, but not without getting caught right in the middle of the Medicaid and driving straight into some of the most aggressive weather we have ever experienced. Currently in terrible rainstorm. The streets are flooding. Edna's raining ash. <laughs> It would be nice if we could have bangers and mash. What are your first impressions of Otidja? I love it. We've barely been walking around for like an hour. And I feel like I keep saying this, but it is very cute. It almost feels like a smaller and cozier tropony. This is a very charming city. Ortigia is a small Baroque island and the historic center of Syracuse. It was one of Greece's most important cities after its founding in 734 BC. Renowned for its Greek heritage, it is a UNESCO landmark for its remarkable testimony of the Mediterranean cultures over the centuries. Welcome to Agrigento. <laughs> this pile of rocks is the Temple of Apollo, considered the oldest and largest Greek Doric temple in Sicily, built around the 7th century BCE. Something I just noticed is that the road barriers are actually all painted. I'm not sure if the paintings have a certain meaning. Each side has a different image on it. So I don't know if it's something particular to the city, but it's pretty cool instead of it just being blank and white. This morning, we're just having a really lovely stroll along the water here. You have the papyrus growing on this side in the fountain of Arethusa. You have the sea on this side. With the unpredictable weather we are currently having here in Otija, we find ourselves just strolling around the little city. And it's actually truly impressive because it's not really a place where you always have to have something to do. You kind of just walk and it, it, you forget what you're actually doing. You just kind of stroll around. It has a lot of beautiful little corners. You kind of just get lost in it. Wandering around the little island here, we came down to this park that used to house the old aquarium. It's just pretty cool because there's such a contrast between buildings and seaside and in this greenery mixed with the freshwater fountain next door that like, 
I just love when a whole bunch of different things come together to make like one cool functioning ecosystem. Like there's a whole bunch of different things. I love not just having one. You have all these choices and I mean, this is just awesome. I can imagine the summertime, this area being really cool and just chilling here in the park. We are currently on the way to the Church of San Filippo. It apparently looks like a normal church from the 1700s. However, it is built on an old synagogue and has underground ritual baths, as well as an underground bunker that was used by the Greeks back in the day, and as well as a World War II bomb shelter. Not gonna lie, travel doesn't always go according to plan. And so we came into this church to see the underground shelters that sounded extremely cool. And it's not like we came at a wrong time or anything. However, they just decided to close all of them. But yeah, so we won't be seeing that today. It's a bummer. I was actually really looking forward yeah. to seeing it. We're both big history nerds. We've said this before, especially it did used to be used as a World War II bunker. So we really wanted to see it, but yeah. We can't. Now that the sun is shining a little bit more, we are on our way to the Puppet Museum, which is different from the Puppet Theatre, or the Puppet Workshop, or the other puppet thingies that are around here. Lots of puppets in the city. Lots of puppet stuff. <laughs> but yeah, there are shows you can watch as well. It's 11 euros per person, and they last 50 minutes. However, we don't really have time to do that right now as we're trying to dodge the weather and try and do as many outdoor things as we can. And so when we return with my mother one day, we'll watch with her. Yeah, if you're here, it's one of the things you should probably come and see. Because from my understanding, the puppets come from this area of Italy. We're currently at the Puppet Museum, or otherwise known as the Place of Nightmares. From my understanding, the man who created these puppets, Saro Vaccaro, had a hell of a lot of nightmares as a child. Look at that bunny head, that's crazy. Is this where the Smurfs originated from? No, but that's where they were murdered. Oh my God. We just stopped into this really cute cafe and we found out that they have a rame di Napoli, which is a dessert that's actually Sicilian, even though it says di Napoli. We've been looking for it everywhere and this is the first time we found it. So this is the Nutella one, I already took a bite. It is so good. It's like almost like a cake and then there's like fudge inside and it's coated on top, like the whole thing. It's delicious. They also have a white chocolate one and a pistachio one. And so we find ourselves once again just roaming the streets. So we try to get into the castle, but I think that's closed because it belongs to the military. We tried to go and see a Caravaggio painting in one of the churches, however, they moved the painting. We tried to go see the underground Jewish baths and World War II shelter, however, that's closed because of the weather. So now we honestly 
we honestly have We're no idea. <laughs> we have no idea what to do next. But is it? To be fair, I'm on my shell <laughs> with this one. It is by far one of the coolest little places to just walk around and absolutely do what? nothing. Like, you know what I think it's time for? Since I'm not driving today, we're gonna have to just go find. Is it time for an adult beverage? It's, a time, it's time to go and quench <laughs> our thirst and roam the little streets. It is very charming. So even if you're just walking around, it actually still is quite enjoyable. This has heavy Game of Thrones vibes. So like some King, King's Landing stuff. If you paid attention to Game of Thrones and where the stuff was filmed, this was not one of those locations. For real, I do have a bunch of stuff for us to do, but we're trying to duck in between the stormy weather and the sunny weather. We'll make the best we can. Maybe we're gonna have to just go have a party somewhere. I've been called beautiful by one of the waiters at one of the restaurants twice now, so. Maybe we can get a discount or something. If that's you, leave us a comment below. Yes, the men love Mateo. Opposite the cathedral, you can see all the different balconies that come from the same period as we do. The Baroque period. Not to be confused with lack of money, but Baroque. These balconies come from the same Baroque period, as you can see by style, and they're little like, I don't actually know how to explain it. How you... Gothic, like gargoyles and, and grotesque. Cool balconies. And opulent. And <laughs> opulent. This beautiful building behind me is the Syracuse Duomo, also known as the Temple of Athena. This church is built on the Greek pillars of the Temple of Athena, which have been standing here since the 5th century BC. The facade comes from the Baroque period in the 18th century, after the majority of it collapsed due to the earthquake in 1693. During the Arab invasion, it was turned into a mosque, and it is currently a cathedral. So we met some of our subscribers in the cathedral and now we're off to find gelato, except every place seems to be closed, which is surprising even though we're in Italy. And it's raining, but it's never too cold for gelato, so the hunt continues. <laughs> Yay! We found one that's open! <laughs> This is Palazzo Borgia del Casale. 
It's seven euros to go in and basically you get a very up close and personal look at this aristocratic frescoed apartment and you get a free glass of champagne at the end. This was definitely one of the more unexpected things we found. Now been caught in a rainstorm. Umbrella but we have, is we have a five euro umbrella. <laughs> and and uh, and a beer. Five euro umbrella that looks like it's a five euro umbrella. It has been pouring with rain. You know what I just realized? Our shoes are soaked, so I just realized that our umbrella cost so or well, the beer was two fifths the price of the umbrella. That should probably say something. Oh <laughs> Mateo Poppins oh Mateo Poppins. I like to ride my umbrella. This is like having this umbrella is like having like, I don't even know how do you describe it? This is like having a vest in a snowstorm. <laughs> like what is the point of this? I don't think it's doing the job. The global expats and their adventures of the five euro umbrella. <laughs> oh god, our shoes are soaked. <laughs> now all we need, now all we need is that, now we're in the open ground, is to get caught amongst a massive storm, and this is all we have, the five euro umbrella. The trusty five euro umbrella. Look at that, hands free kits included. <laughs> this five year umbrella will last us our entire trip. Whether it has wings or not. In our next episode, we make our way to the home of Sicilian Baroque architecture and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Noto.